Hi, Bob the Canadian here. Welcome to this English lesson about plants and flowers. I'll be honest, it's mostly going to be about flowers because Jen and I live on a flower farm. In this video, I will teach you some words and phrases that you can use when you're talking about plants and flowers. Uh, as I take you through a little tour of how we go from planting seeds to harvesting and selling flowers on our flower farm. Well, hey, welcome to this English lesson about plants and flowers. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, don't forget to click that subscribe button over there and give me a thumbs up if this video helps you learn just a little bit more English. Well, these beautiful flowers were all originally seeds. One of the first things we do on our farm every spring is we order seeds. The seeds are the small, tiny things that plants grow from. I'll see if I can show you one. It might not focus on it. But a seed is something that you plant in the ground and eventually when the seed has some water and the seed has some warmth from sunlight, it will germinate. When a seed germinates, that's when it first starts to grow. So one of the first things we do is we choose what flowers we want to grow and then Jen will order them. In fact, we have boxes like this filled with seeds. These are simply the seeds that start with the letter A up to the seeds that start with the letter D. On our farm though, we don't plant our seeds in the ground. We start almost all of our seeds in trays. This is a special plastic tray that has tiny spots for each seed. We fill it with a special kind of soil called potting soil, which is really rich and just a good soil for starting seeds in. So we put one seed in every hole and then eventually, they will germinate and you will have something like this. This is a tray of scabiosa. And over here we have a beautiful tray of sunflowers. So we don't plant our seeds in the ground. We plant them in trays. And then once they're big enough, we transplant them. Once the plants are big enough, we will transplant them into the flower bed where we want them to grow. The English word transplant means when you take a plant from one place where it's growing, and you plant it in a different place. So we have plants growing in trays and we transplant them into the ground. After the flowers are transplanted, there's really two things that they need. Uh, they need lots of sunshine and we're getting plenty of that today. Uh, and they need water. Our hope is that it rains a lot. Usually in our area, it rains from time to time, but sometimes it's not enough water for the flowers and plants to thrive. It's not enough water for them to grow well, so we need to irrigate. This is what we would call a sprinkler, I'm trying to get it in focus for you. Um, a sprinkler is something that turns and it shoots water out while it turns. Uh, we also use what's called drip line. Drip line is a type of hose with tiny holes in it so water can drip out at a constant rate. Um, so either it rains or we use the sprinklers or we use the drip line so that the flowers can get all of the water that they need. Uh, and then we just hope for a lot of sunny days. When it comes to watering plants, there are two things that are quite helpful. One is the fact that we live on a river. So we have plenty of water when we need to water the plants. And the second thing that helps keep all of our flowers watered is this electric pump down here. This pump runs a lot during the dry parts of the summer and it really helps keep all of our flowers happy and growing well. At this part of the lesson, I think we should look at some of the actual flowers because I know many of you want to see what they look like and they're beautiful. We grow several different kinds of flowers on the farm, um, but our main crops, the main flowers that we grow would be flowers like Lysianthus. We like Lysianthus because it grows really well in our soil and it grows really well in our climate and it produces a number of different colors. So we have light pinks, we have light yellows, we have a pure white. Lysianthus is just a beautiful flower and every stem has more than one flower on it. That's really cool as well because it just creates a very beautiful flower. We also grow Sweet William. Sweet William is an excellent flower as well. We like Sweet William because it lasts a really long time in a vase. That's very important when you are a flower farmer. You want your flowers to last a long time after a customer buys them. We also grow sunflowers. 
We also grow zinnias. You'll notice though that in the sunflower patch, you don't see a lot of sunflowers because we actually harvest the sunflower as it's opening. Um, so when you see big fields of sunflowers, those aren't for bouquets. They are growing those sunflowers for seed, but ours are just slightly closed. I did find one though that was a little bit open. Um, and we grow a lot of zinnias. Zinnias as well are a flower that produces an enormous range of color. There's orange, there's yellow, there's red, there's purple. It's so nice to have a flower that grows well and also produces such a variety of color. Uh, and then we also grow dahlias, but unfortunately it's only the beginning of August. So our dahlia patch is very green. Uh, you can see that we have it all set up in nice rows. Every row has drip line to keep the dahlia plants watered. And we put up the strings so that the dahlias don't fall over on a windy day. But we'll have to wait a few weeks before the dahlias start to bloom. Again, we grow a wide range of flowers on our farm uh, and things besides flowers as well. But um, those would probably be the main ones that we grow. After several weeks of beautiful sunshiny days and lots of rain or water, the flowers will bloom and they will be ready to harvest. In order to harvest or cut flowers, we use pruners. We look for flowers where the blooms are the right size to sell and then we will cut them with the pruner. There's one right here. As you can see, I'm slowly harvesting some beautiful pink zinnias. This is the door to our flower cooler. Our cooler is a large room that we keep extra cold so that the flowers stay good while we're waiting to sell them. Let's go in and have a quick look. The next thing we need to do after we harvest our flowers or after we cut our flowers is we need to take the flowers like these lisianthus here and we need to combine them with other flowers to make a bouquet. So a bouquet is when you arrange flowers in a way that's very pleasing to the eye. You arrange them in a way that's very visually pleasing and that is called a bouquet. Here you can see one of our large bouquets. We call this a sunflower bouquet. Now you get to see some sunflowers. And over here we have some of our smaller bouquets. These bouquets come in a nice little vase or jar. And you can see this bouquet has a lot of zinnias in it. So one of the last things we do before we sell our flowers is we spend a lot of time taking the stems and making bouquets. The last thing we do with our flowers is we take them to market so we can sell them. So every week we load up our van and Jen goes to our local farmer's market. A farmer's market is a market that's usually outside during the spring, summer, and fall. And it's a place where farmers sell the things that they grow. At our farmer's market, there are farmers that sell vegetables, there are farmers that sell fruit, and there are farmers like us that sell flowers. Um, so each week we go, Jen sets up our booth or stall. It has two different names and she displays all of the bouquets so that people can decide if they want to buy one. Every, every bouquet has a price on it and just so you know in Canada when you see a price on something at a market you usually pay that price. We don't often negotiate or discuss the price of something in Canada. I know in some countries it's very common. In Canada it is not. You pay the price that you see on the product. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this little English lesson. I know it was more of a tour of my farm than a pure English lesson, but I hope you were able to learn some new English words and phrases along the way. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new here, don't forget to click that red subscribe button over there so that you'll get a notification when I make a new video. And if you have some time, why don't you stick around and watch another video.